Welcome back, everyone. I am so glad to enthusiastically recommend this brand new book. It's called A Concise Guide to the Life of Muhammad, Answering 30 Key Questions, and it's written by Professor Ayman Ibrahim. As the title indicates, this book is in a question and answer format, looking at 30 important areas of Muhammad's life, and Professor Ibrahim is well qualified as your sure-footed guide to answering these questions, combining his incredible breadth of background knowledge with his analysis of the relevant primary Arabic sources. You need this book. There are a couple of links in the description box to help you out. In this video, I'd like to look at one of the fascinating questions the book asks, namely, what is significant about Muhammad's genealogy? Now, we all know the answer to this question. He's a descendant of Abraham through Ishmael, and we know this because we're told it by Muslims repeatedly, just like we're told repeatedly that the Quran is miraculously preserved or that Muhammad is the best person to ever walk the earth. And of course, when we're told about Muhammad's connection to Abraham, it often comes with, you guessed it, a lot of reverb and even some voices droning in the background to make it double, extra, super duper convincing. For Muhammad bin Abdullah bin Abdul Muttalib bin Hashim bin Abd Munaf bin Qusayn bin Kilab bin Murra. But some of you skeptics out there may not regard repetition and reverb as convincing evidence. So what evidence is there for tracing Muhammad's genealogy to Abraham? A concise guide to the life of Muhammad helps answer this question. In commenting on a related issue of the lack of evidence for Abraham visiting Mecca, Ibrahim says, nor can we even establish a connection between Ishmael and the Arabs, and consequently, between Ishmael and Muhammad. In fact, some classical Muslim authorities do not support Muhammad's lineage to Ishmael. What classical Muslim authorities is he referring to? Ibn Sa'd asserts that when Muhammad detailed his lineage, he stopped many generations before reaching Ishmael. Al-Masudi writes in two works that Muhammad forbade Muslims from tracing his lineage after Ma'ad, who was at least nine generations distanced from Ishmael. He, referring to Al-Masudi, emphasizes that Muhammad commanded Muslims to trace his lineage only to Ma'ad, as genealogists are liars. Moreover, classical Sunni hadith expert and jurist al-Bayhaqi agrees with Ibn Sa'd and al-Masudi and writes that although some report that Muhammad was a descendant of Ishmael, this is false, as the lineage goes only to Adnan, the father of Ma'ad. Ironically, these Muslim scholars provide justification for modern scholars who have argued for the lateness and unreliability of Muhammad's supposed genealogical links. See, for example, Reuven Firestone. In discussing the way a story about Hagar was Islamicized for inclusion into the Hadith, he comments, The evidence for this insertion of the Islamic motif can be found in Arabic genealogies, which appear to connect the northern Arabs and the tribe of Muhammad to Hagar and Ishmael only in late, that is, Islamic texts. Pre-Islamic pagan Arab genealogies appear to have no awareness or concern for the connection, which probably evolved only after the Quran made a case for Abraham being the first Muslim. We even find Yasser Qadi attacking some sections of Muhammad's ancient genealogy, calling it nothing but folklore. So where do we get this information from? From Arabic folklore. And Arabic folklore has not been preserved that well. And if you look at some of the charts printed uh, in, the, uh, in the Muslim world, and we find them in our houses, you find a, a lineage of the process them all the way to Adam. You see, must have seen this. It's also online and whatnot, right? This, this chart is half fact, half myth, and half fiction. Ah, that doesn't make sense. One third, one third, one third, okay? <laughs> As for the fact, it is between us and, uh, between uh, process them and Adnan, that's a fact. From Adnan to Ismail, Somewhat of a myth. Then from Ismail to Adam, this complete, we take it from the Jewish Christian sources. We don't have anything in our tradition about the lineage between uh, the, uh, from Ismail and Ibrahim all the way back to the Prophet Adam alayhi salam. As expected, Dr. Ibrahim is able to cite more modern scholars who dispute the genealogical link from the Arabs to Ishmael 
which of course also breaks the link between Muhammad and Abraham. And as we've seen in doing this, these scholars really aren't much different from some important classical Muslim voices. There is, however, a great deal of contrast between all of this and the popular Muslim narrative that we hear repeated today with reverb and voices droning in the background. Given the foregoing, I can't see at all how it's remotely defensible to call Islam an Abrahamic religion. This has always been true theologically, but now we see that it's true genealogically as well. Ibrahim concludes by postulating why a connection between Muhammad and the biblical patriarchs was needed. Since no patriarch is more important to Christians and Jews than Abraham, Muhammad's lineage had to be connected to him. And so a connection was made, though the connection was late and the genealogical enterprise was substantially limited by the Prophet of Islam himself. Ibrahim's book is accessible to readers with minimal background knowledge and packed with information. And there's also a section in the back of the book that will give you further reading on various topics. So, was Muhammad a descendant of Abraham? Let me know what you think in the comments section below, and be sure to pick up your concise guide to the life of Muhammad to explore this and many more important Muhammad questions and answers. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.